with the Cincinnati Open done and dusted and an epic finale to the both the men and women's competitions. The seeds are now locked for the US Open. And it's interesting to see because we did have the one and two in the world up for grabs this week. And to see who stayed on top. But let's have a look at the results from last week. Starting with the Cincinnati Open for the ladies and Coco Goff. Won the biggest trophy of her career, beating Mukova in the final 6-3, 6-4 to lift the Cincinnati Open. And on the men's side, at the Cincinnati Open, Novak Djokovic saving championship points, coming back 5-7, 7-6, 7-6 against Alcaraz to get a little revenge after what happened at Wimbledon. So some big results there, and there were some changes in the rankings because of those results. Let's start with the players outside the top 10 that have gone up in the rankings this week. Paulini, she goes up to a career high number 35 in the world after making it as a qualifier to the Cincinnati quarterfinals. She's gone up eight spots to number 35. Alexi Poprin, he's also at a career high at number 40 after making it to the quarterfinals of Cincinnati as a lucky loser. 18 spots higher than last week. And Purcell also, as a qualifier, getting into the quarterfinals of Cincinnati. He goes up 23 spots to number 47, which is a career high for him. So the qualifiers getting it done in Cincinnati and getting big boosts in the rankings ahead of the US Open. Players that have gone down in the rankings over the last week, Kostchuk. She's gone down five spots to number 37 in the world after some players did better than her at Cincinnati. So she's in danger of not being seeded at the US Open. Juana Chorich, last year's winner of Cincinnati, he goes down 13 spots to number 29 in the world. And John Isner, he goes down 52 spots spots down to 158 in the world also after losing a lot of points at Cincinnati so some big drops there for some players who played well there last year all right let's start with the WTA rankings now and we didn't have many changes Fiontech she stays at number one ahead of Sabalenka at number two and there's a big gap between the two of them now so even though the US Open has a lot of points to defend for Fiontech Sabalenka also have a semi-final so we might not get a change after the US Open but it does depend on the results Pagula stays at number three and Rabakina will be at four and that is the top four seeds locked in for the US Open Jabir comes in at five, but Coco Goff, after winning in Cincy, she goes up to number six, pushing Garcia down to number seven, which means that'll be the sixth and seventh seed going into the US Open in a week. Zachary comes in at eight, but down the bottom, Kvitova, she drops out of the top 10, making way from Von Drusova, who goes up to number nine, and Mukova, the finals of Cincy, she goes up to number 10, seven spots higher than last week, and a career high for her. So, some big changes ahead of the final Grand Slam of the year, and the players that did well in Cincy getting rewarded. Looking at the race of the finals now for the WTA, no change at the top with Sabalenka and Sviontek, both qualifying still, the only two players that have qualified. We're back in a really close behind to qualifying. If she does a decent run at the US Open, she'll be qualified by the time we get to the ranking show again in a couple of weeks. Pagula stays at number four, but Coco Goff, she goes up to number five after winning Cincinnati, pushing down Von Drusova and Jabir to number six and seven. Mukova, she goes up to number eight after making the final of Cincinnati, and she pushes down Kvitova and Bencic to number nine and ten. So, so the two finals from last week rising up into contention of the WTA finals, of course. There's only eight spots up for grabs. Two Two spots are gone, six spots left. Rabakin is not that far away. Pagula is also not too far away. So I'm sure after the US Open, there are going to be even less spots up for grabs for the WTA Finals race. All right, jumping over to the men's side of things and no change at the top. Alcaraz holds top spot yet again before another slam. He will be the number one seed going in to the US Open, the third slam in a row now. That he'll be the top seed ahead of Djokovic at number two, despite Djokovic winning in Cincinnati. Medvedev will be number three. And Holger Runa, he goes up to number four, which will be the highest seed that he will be at a slam so far in his career, mainly due to City Pass dropping down so far after not making it as far as he did last year in Cincinnati. Root also got a boost up to number five. That's two spots higher than last week. Yannick Sinner stays at six, and there is City Pass at number seven. So some real changes there, mainly due to the fact that City Pass had a final to defend from last year's Cincinnati, and he dropped down and lost a lot of points. Rublev stays at number eight with Fritz at number nine, and Tiafo will round out the top ten. Of course, that will be the seeds for the US Open going forward. There are some injury concerns potentially with Runa. Uh, if he does pull out, that means everyone gets to go up one spot. But at this stage, they're the US Open seeds after the week in Cincy. Having a look at the finals race now, and it's starting to get real interesting. With Alcaraz qualified, but Novak Djokovic has also qualified on points after Cincinnati. He already had kind of qualified anyway because he won two Grand Slams, but he officially qualifies now, becomes the second player on the ATP to play the finals at the end of the year. Medvedev not too far behind at number three with Sinner at four, City Pass at five. Rublev comes in at number six with Runa at seven. But Alexander Zverev, he goes up two spots to number eight after making the semifinals of Cincinnati, pushing Rude down to number 10. And Fritz stays in the middle there at number nine after a nice run as well. So getting really interesting now and a lot of familiar names. Of course, at the start of the year, you get a lot of random players in this position, but we're starting to see a lot of familiar names, a lot of players that have already played 
the ATB Finals, and of course, guys like Elkrez and Runa, who are yet to play, but there are a lot of familiar names there, and it is shaping up, and of course, after the US Open, expect a lot of these players to qualify, and less spots up for grabs. So there you have it, they are the rankings going into the US Open, and the seedings are set, everything is set for the US Open, there are tournaments next week, but of course, they don't matter to the seedings, but no change up the top. Again, Sviantec stays up on top against uh, Sabalenka, and of course, Alcaraz holds Djokovic back, despite Djokovic winning in Cincinnati, but let me know down in the comments below. Are you excited about the US Open? Also, who are you most scared about at the US Open for those top seeds? Because there's some players outside the top 10 that have been in some good form lately, but those are the seeds set for the US Open. That happens next week. Draw comes out Friday. We'll see you then.